Hi, this is Swati from the softwaretestinghelp.com team and in this segment we will talk about test estimation. Now, test estimation, there is really no shortcut to it. I know there is plenty of content available on the internet uh, with a lot of theories like function point analysis and there are lots of formulae on you know how to calculate the number of input points, output points, test cases, validation points. So there's plenty of uh, different ways to do it. But the easiest way that I have figured out, again I wouldn't say uh, the easiest but I would say something that is a very organic method of doing it is um, Again, um, formulas, yes, they do have a certain level of, um, you know, um, they, they do have a certain level of assured success, but I, in my experience, I found that uh, test estimation is more of an art than of a science. So, it, it is, you know, uh, not exactly a formula that helps, uh, but, you know, the kind of uh, awareness that anything might happen anytime to actually be able to anticipate contingencies, to be able to gauge the entire testing effort early on are few things that helps this process a lot. And another thing that really helps is the mindset that, you know, we always have to keep in mind that estimate is always going to be an estimate. It will never be accurate. It will never be the actual data. So it will. It is always good to recognize this fact and to move on when an estimate goes wrong. Um, I mean, of course, there are always rep repercussions of estimations going wrong. Uh, but then, you know, it's it's a it's a good attitude to remember that you know things always. I mean, there's no way estimate is always going to be an estimate. So there's always going to be a certain amount of deviation. Um, but then, you know, when when the deviation does occur, it's it's an important aspect to step back a little bit and figure out how we could have avoided that and, you know, le learn the lessons and move on is uh, my policy with it. So, to really help the test estimation process, I think there are two things that are very, very important. One is historical data. Uh, Again, this is one of the reasons why test estimation is not carried out by uh, QA team members. It is something that is done by the QA coordinator, QA lead or, you know, the QA manager because a certain level of experience, a certain level of being in the field uh, really, really helps the test estimation process. And the other thing, as I said, the alacrity, the, you know, uh, awareness of the entire process, uh, the client's timelines in, la in, in mind, all of these are important factors. So I'm just going to show you my approach to how I perform test estimation and I've been fairly successful. I, I, wouldn't, I, I wouldn't deny that there have been times when the estimation did go wrong, um, but then, you know, uh, fairly successful, I would say. Uh, so this is my take on the subject and this is something that, you know, I hope even the absolute beginners would uh, find it easy to, you know, uh, get started with it. So, few things before, uh, you know, uh, we get to test estimation is, uh, always check the project plan. Because, oh, in the overall project plan, so when, in the overall project plan, let's assume if the project is six months, and six stages in the SDLC, right? So, test is the stage five. Correct? So at least from, uh, I mean, for the sake of simple math, let's just say each stage is going to take one month. So this project is overall six months. So if testing is to happen in stage five, which means test execution is something that will uh, go on for a month, dividing everything equally, for a month uh, sometime during May. So we assume, so if everything is starting in January, calendar year, uh, so test execution is for a month starting 1st May to 31st May. So this is the assumption that we have. And this will include both system plus UAT. And UAT is always something that is very much smaller in scale. So we can very safely divide it as three weeks and for system testing and one week for UAT. So right now we are looking at finishing all our test execution activities in a period of three weeks time, right? And we know that in STLC there are three stages, test planning, test design, um, and test execution. Now a lot of times we think that uh, test planning is something that, you know, happens like over a day or two, but you know, one third of the entire testing effort goes to test planning. Test designing is the same thing. Uh, one third of the entire testing effort goes to 
um, you know test design and test execution also one third of it goes to test execution so uh, and we always think that test planning since it starts yeah, ahead of time it is something that will go on for a long long time that's not true actually the effort that it takes to test plan the effort that it takes to design and execution should be pretty much the same so we, we are looking at three weeks of uh, test plan, three weeks worth of test planning effort, three weeks worth of test design, three weeks worth of test execution. And the next thing that plays a part, so one is the time that plays a part, so the three weeks is just a timeline, right? Um, the other thing that plays a part is the team size. How many t team members are you looking at? So when you're looking at three team members, so never will an effort, you know, estimation will be conducted or, you know, uh, will be done based on just the timeline alone because that will not be accurate. So because um, when you look at the SDLC versus STLC, there is, um, so when you look at the SDLC versus STLC, Test planning, uh, you know, uh, spans from initiate all the way to coding. Uh, test design uh, starts at the design and goes through coding. And test execution is just part of the test phase. So when you are looking at dividing each of this phase equally for, a, for one month, uh, test planning takes four months, test design takes two, test execution takes three weeks. And if this is to be true, our argument that, uh, you know, each of these has, it takes the same effort, same uh, time is actually, you know, refuted, right? So in that case, what we have to do is always consider the number of people, three team, team members, assuming they work eight hours a day, you're looking at um, three times eight, which is... twenty four hours of work every single day so twenty four hours of work into you know uh, five business days a week so three business days so that is fifteen so you're looking at three hundred and sixty hours of work right so it is three hundred and sixty hours of work for test execution so three hundred and sixty hours of work needs to go in for test planning test design the test design also is something that gets carried out for 360 hours and test execution also 360 hours. Now in real time this is a lot of uh, time actually it does not it, you will you're not going to get this much of time but this is just for the sake of our understanding. So from the project plan we have derived that this is approximately the amount of time we have to conduct each of our testing activities. The next thing is to divide these 360 hours uh, among tasks among team members. So test planning is, is something that you know um, the entire team contributes but then the test lead is the one who will uh, completely own this process. Now one of the biggest blunders that you know test estimation teams can make is not taking into consideration all the phases that happen. So in, in fact, when I begin starting the test planning phase, I always include some time for knowledge transfer or orientation. And I would allocate 10% of my entire uh, phase time for orientation. So 10% of uh, 360, so that's approximately, you know, 36 hours, I would allocate it for you know, uh, knowledge transfer. Again, uh, if you ask me how did I come up with 10%, because if a project takes about 360 hours to just plan, you would at least have to spend, you know, one tenth of it on understanding the whole project. Otherwise, the whole effort is going to crumble down. Uh, so this is an estimate. This is just, you know, again, as I said, an intuitive number, an intuitive figure there. Um, again, this depends on how well your team knows the application, how well they're comfortable with it, all of these factors. Uh, so the number of hours is, I mean, I mean the, uh, ten percent. I would say for knowledge transfer. Then I would include some time for requirement gathering. Then I would include some time for um, test scenario creation. So here, this, here we are planning for uh, all test documentation, including the test plan creation, um, and then um, test uh, test plan creation, test case creation. Mm, reviews, peer reviews, traceability matrices, um, and then if you have any other, you know, um, coordination meetings and everything that needs to happen, you will have to plan and allocate time for that. Um, so, uh, you know, let's assume this is it. And I always like to plan uh, with a contingency factor that is 
over the time uh, about 30 percent is the industry standard but 30 percent we do not have the luxury of that in real time so I normally take anywhere between 20 to 25 percent of test estimation so following uh, so for requirement gathering so 10 percent of our effort is going for knowledge transfer another 10 percent is going to go for um, another 10 percent is going to go for coordination effort so this will be you know um, for the overall communication coordination making sure everything is happening fine so we are looking at 36 hours that goes to this 36 hours that's, that's go to, that goes to this contingency factor is 20 to 25 percent so here we are looking at um, the entire test documentation that is you know 360 plus 360 so we are looking at Oh, well, you get the picture. So it's 36 plus 36, that is 72. I thought I'll just use a formula, but that's okay. So 72 hours for, um, you know, coordination, 72 hours for uh, knowledge transfer, and the rest of it, 25% of it is contingency. Um, so that is one-fourth of it, which is um, 180 hours. Uh, for contingency so you're looking at 72 plus 72 plus 180 um, plus you know you will plan for the rest of the, so whatever hours is left you will plan for the rest of it now requirement gathering so if you have let's say X amount of work I would say the requirement gathering takes about um, 20 to you know 20 to 30 percent of the time test scenarios creation test plan creation all of the other documentation would take the rest of the time so this is how you can estimate your test plan now estimating the test execution is always tricky because you will have to take into consideration three things uh, the execution itself uh, the test case maintenance and then the test case um, you will have to take care of test case execution maintenance um, and the reporting also uh, so the reporting again 10% because that's coordination maintenance also will not take 10 to 15% of the time that you have execution is you know the rest of the time now you might be wondering that I'm just distributing time and not really estimating it so estimating you know um, my uh, again my take on how if, if I have to like you know if I if I'm not working with a uh, framed timeline if I have to come up with my own set of timelines on how much how many hours of effort every activity is going to take I try to calculate that based on the complexity of the functions I'm testing so when I'm looking at an application you know try to understand how how much of a scope there is try to understand how many requirements there are how many pages there are so whatever works try to quantify that if you are quantifying it by the number of pages that's okay if you're quantifying it by the number of use cases that's okay so at least you know if you have use cases or if you have this kind of you know a number of pages uh, try to take try a trial run of you know your most complex functionality and try to write your test cases or you know try to estimate the number of test cases that that might yield um, so for a complex functionality I would say 8 to 10 test cases is what you can write in a particular day and what you can execute also and for test cases which are really simple you know uh, medium complexity it is 30 that you can write and 30 that you can execute and for you know field level validations exploratory tests you can run about a thousand of them every single day depending on you know I mean thousand is maybe an exaggeration so probably uh, around uh, 100 or so and those things you know you will have to just you know allocate some time in your um, testing phase for um, exploratory testing but other than that I don't think there is any formula that ex uh, that you know exactly tries to calculate the effort estimation it is um, and and you know it the chances of the success will be more if you are willing to go back and revise always and when it comes to a testing project one advice that has helped me greatly is uh, from a team manager of mine and uh, he always used to say when in doubt try to overestimate but never underestimate so when it, because testing is a reactive job and we are we are always uh, relying on the other teams uh, making it on time but when they don't we're actually in a situation where we probably have nothing to test right uh, and that is going to affect in uh, you know delaying the timelines we're probably not having enough time to test so always 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 include the contingency factors do not miss out on any steps so when followed this uh, method for a period of time I'm sure you know uh, um, 
again, whenever you, you find yourself that the estimation has gone wrong, sit down and try and analyze why that's the case. And if there's anything that, you know, we can do from our end to, you know, not turn into the same situation uh, again in the future. So this is my take on test estimation. As I said, um, as always, you're welcome to ask your questions. Thank you, everyone.